Hey there friends, I'm Leo, and today is the long overdue rework that I said I wanted to make on the last devlog. Um, I'm going to be showcasing the new developments that I made such as a completely new character skeleton, a new animation blueprint, a better interface, and much, much more. Here is a quick comparison from the old character model to this new one. The differences are night and day, but apart from only animations, the character is completely redone in terms of the mesh of the character and the topology. And the main reason for me to do this rework is that the old character skeleton was not very optimized for game dev because of the bone structure. Here is, for example, a comparison between the two models in Blender. And also now the character has an inside for the mouth with teeth and tongue. Here is what an optimized character skeleton looks like, at least for Unreal Engine. You can see that the leg bone links directly to the foot bone. Well, for the old skeleton, the foot bone had a very different hierarchy, because I wanted to have an optimized skeleton for animation in Blender, so I used things like controllers, um, inverse kinematic controllers inside of Blender, and I didn't really realize at the time that I would not have a very good skeleton for game engines per se. Because game engines, they focus more on optimization rather than having a bunch of different controllers for animation creation, because game engines, they don't really create animation, they just use the animation that is already done. So, the way I made this new skeleton was by using Rigify and the UEFI script. There is a very interesting video series by CG Dive that explains this a lot better. So if you want to check it out, the link will be in the description. I will also be adding a link to the UEFI script. So now that I have this optimized skeleton, what can I do with it in terms of animation? Well, the main difference is that now I can do stuff like inverse kinematics at real time in Unreal, which make the character change the foot position based on the terrain. And another thing that I can do now is use marketplace animations. And this is great because it can help me save such a big amount of time that I would have to spend in doing all of these animations by hand. For example, the combat system, I'm going to do all of the animations by hand. And I really want very smooth and just very high quality animations. So I'm probably going to have to spend months and months of work into these animations. So by finding pre-made animations for stuff like running and locomotion and climbing, it is already a very, very big help. Being a solo dev, I need all the help I can get, and having these professionally created quality animations are very, very welcome. One other thing that I wanted to make is a female model variation for the player, and here it is. I made some massive, massive reworks for the first generation system as well. Now I separated first trends and fur colors completely, to the point where I have individual variations for each race and sex, then I join it all in code. It sounds a bit confusing, I know, but remember the item system that I made where you have like one item that is like the father of all of the other items, and then the sons would have the same characteristics plus a little bit more stuff? If you don't remember, um, I made a video where I was talking about organization in a project, and then I explained my item system. And for the first trends, what I did is make a master variation, 
that is on top and holds all of the base characteristics for it. And this master variation will have the configurations as well, something like level of detail. So from that, I generate all of the first for each race and each sex. Now, here is where I added the most amount of planning, not only for right now, but also in the future. Everything that is labeled variation 1 is going to become only one object inside of the generator. So, I have this generator system, it is going to group together all of the variations, and then the system itself is going to decide who the player is before applying the variation. In the future, when I add pugs or huskies, it will be extremely easy to add because the system will already be able to hold the extra information and will already know what to do with all of the different variations that I feed into it. In the future as well, when I add something like a character creation screen, I will make use of the extra colors and grooms. And I plan on doing some other things to customize the player as well. For example, um, right now you can choose if you want the character to have the ears pointing up or the ears pointing down. I can add little stuff like that and lots of different aspects of the customization. Now, speaking of ears, I think you realize that the ears and the tail have dynamic physics simulations. This is just another perk of having a better skeleton, because on the older skeleton I needed to have a inverse kinematics controller on the ears and on the tail, so that it would make it easier to make animations for it. But now I don't need that anymore with a much more optimized skeleton, so I can apply these physics simulations in real time using the animation blueprint. To do something like this, all you gotta do is use the dynamics node on your animation blueprint. In here, you can set the constraints for the node and what bones you want affected. If you have a tail or something like that, you can make a bone chain. Unreal has a really good video about it, where the guy shows a Paragon character that looks absolutely amazing with these simulations. One awesome mechanic that I reworked is this thing called fur masks. For example, the character has fur all over its body, right? Well, what if I'm using a hat that would clip the fur? What if I'm using tank tops and I want the fur to um, only show on the arms but not show on the character chest? That is where masks come into account. See, I was already using masks on the old system, but it was very me um, mechanical, I guess I could say. It's just that, you know, instead of making a for loop, you make a bunch of ifs and elses. I guess that is what you could say the old system was doing. But now I'm using a for loop and I am identifying each piece of gear, regardless of what it is, and I am adding all of them together into a big mask. So, the old system only supported masks if you were using special pieces of gear, so a chest piece or pants or gloves. But if you were using something like a backpack, you could not hold any mask information. But now with the new system, each piece of gear is going to have a fur mask attached to it. Meaning that each piece of gear will be able to clip pieces of fur as much as it needs to. So if I have a, some glasses that I want to clip parts of the fur, this can happen easily now with any piece of gear that I have. With this new skeleton, I have the opportunity to make complex systems in regards to animation, being a segue into our next topic, which is the new animation system that I'm using. So, there is this absolutely incredible plugin that is free called Advanced Locomotion System. It is one of the most professionally done things I have ever seen in my life. The people that were working on it were so good that Epic hired them. That's how good they are. Hey, I'm um, editor Leo here and um, I'm editing the video and I keep saying they for like the creators of the advanced locomotion system, but it seems like it is just one guy. 
I don't know why, but I was under the impression that it was more people that worked on it. I think I read it somewhere, but now I can't find it for the life of me. And um, just so that I can be extra clear, I think it's just one guy that worked on it. I can't really find any information on his name so that I could give him proper credit. But I'm going to be leaving a link for the advanced locomotion system on the description if you guys want to check it out. Um, yeah, that's it. To be honest, the first time I saw this under the hood, I felt like Todd watching Walter White cook. I felt flabbergasted. Because my skeleton is identical to the Unreal Engine skeleton minus tail and ears, I can use this animation system on my character as well. There is this thing called animation retargeting, which is when you can apply different animations to your character skeleton if they share the same bone structure, or if they share the same bone positioning, you can alter all of the different configurations inside of the retargeting. But I did not want to just ham fist my character into this working system. I wanted to truly understand its inner workings, thus I came with a plan. I wanted to remake this from absolute scratch, instead of just placing my character inside of it. I would only start with the base animations the system provides, but I would make the whole blueprint from zero, looking at what they did as a guide and as a reference. Also as a challenge, I wanted to add replication to the system, meaning that it would work with multiplayer as well. The original system does not support this mainly because of their custom camera system they made, so I felt like I had to give these guys the proper respect for coming up with this um, amazing asset, and the least I could do is understand it. After almost giving up in the beginning, I finally made my character walk around, and it was the best feeling in the world, but today I can say I understand what they made, and also I made multiplayer replication work with it. Remember the old animation system that I had? I want to make a better version of that in combination with the advanced locomotion system because the way they build the system is so good that you can expand on it a lot you know you can really build upon the base that they made and the base that they made is very solid one of the changes that i want to do from their system and i want to expand upon is their overlay system the overlay system is for example let's say the player is injured the overlay system is just a very small animation of like 4 frames with a couple of just um, poses that the character is going to make and they get dynamically added to the player base locomotion. So what I want to do is split this into three core things. The first one is the permanent personality. What this is, is the main pose of the character. Currently I have the male and the female permanent personalities. As you can see here, the running animations for the male and the female characters are different, but the system is the same. That is because of the permanent personality. Below this, we have a temporary personality. This is going to change during gameplay a lot more often. So for temporary personalities, we have normal, tired, injured, and well rested. So if you are very low on health, your character will walk around like he's hurt. If you stay more than 48 hours awake, your character will look tired. I even made the character take a lot longer to blink during the tired personality as well as blink with the only available eye during the hurt personality. So it's a bunch of these different tweaks that I'm making based on their temporary personality as well. There are multiple combinations for these where each permanent personality will have all of the variants of the temporary ones. So you have male hurt, female hurt, male tired, female tired, so on and so forth. So in the future, if I wanted to, I could add another permanent personality that you could either unlock or choose during character creation. One other idea is the cold temporary personality. If your character is, for example, in an area that is very cold, he could look like he is shaking from the cold air. Next up is the tool holding animation. 
I still don't have a specific name for it because it's not done yet. I still have to work on it. But it's going to be similar to the system that I had before, where your character is going to hold a weapon or a tool on one hand or on the other. I have a really good idea for a deep system where you manage main hand and off hand that I will be showing for in the next devlog. Hey, I'm Future Leo here again, and I've been editing this video, and it seems like the video is going to be over 30 minutes long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be splitting this video up in two parts with one part coming up today and the next part coming up next week. So on the next part we're going to be going over the interface and how I made the 2D particle effects that you see a little bit on this video and um, I'm going to go over the new inventory system too because I reorganized a bunch of stuff on my widgets. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'm Leo, signing off. <music>